Hello, and welcome to an update on the program LAIL. LAIL is now re reaching a 2.0 release, and over the years has been built from the bottom up, and is now an open source program available for people to download, compile, and edit themselves. If you're interested in the source code, go to github.com slash vanargyle slash LAIL 2.0, or if you are in the editor itself, if you go to help credits, there will be a link to the GitHub page in the credits. Let's go ahead and jump into LAIL 2.0, and let's give a comparison to LAIL 1.2. So LAIL 2.0 is on the left, LAIL 1.2 is on the right. Let's go ahead and open a Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX version 1.2 ROM. Only 1.2 works with this editor, version 1 and 1.1 do not work. So as you can see on the main page of LAIL 2.0, the clutter has been reduced immensely. Uh, the map data found in the top left of LAIL 1.2, as well as dungeon room event data found in the bottom right, which clutters the main screen quite a bit, is now found in the map data button, which opens up a window where you can find all the map data that LAIL 1.2 had, as well as the room event data. So looking at the main features, we have the tile set and the tile selector on the left here. This is what you use to select tiles for adding collisions and changing the overlay of the overworld. Simply click on the tile and you'll see which tile you've selected. On the middle, we have the map view. This is the map. You have both an overlay and a collision view. Now overlay is only for the overworld. Dungeons do not have an overlay and are collisions only. Going back to the overworld, let's just pick a map. So. On the overlay, same editing, you simply, as layer 1.2, you simply click the tile, and you can click and drag, and you can right click to select the tile on the map so that you can edit with ease, switching between tiles that are already drawn on the map. There is a now a undo and redo feature. You can undo any drawings any uh, updates to the map you've done just simply by pressing Control Z or Control Y or by going to the edit menu undo redo um, then we have the collision list grayed out right now because we're on the overlay view if we go to collision the collision list will populate and this is where you can view and select all the collisions on the map so simply left click on the map and you will select a collision. If you want to update collisions, all the data is here in the collision view. You can change length, ID, you can delete or add collisions. A quick way of deleting collisions is simply double right clicking the collision on the map. That will delete collisions for you. Let's just undo those changes. A now a, a quick way to get rid of all the collisions on a map is to right click the collision list itself and click clear all. Let's just undo that. New to LAIL 2.0, changes are now saved automatically. You do not have to click the save button every change you make in the editor. So if I delete this collision here, we go to the next map without saving, the editor has still recognized the change. Now, no changes will be made to the ROM until you click the Save button itself. So you must click Save to make the changes, but you can edit your changes all in one view without having to worry about saving between maps. When you move between maps, the redo list and the undo list reset, so you, you lose your chance to change back items. So make sure you stay on the map you want to edit for the amount of time you're editing it. Collision editing. Um, it's been simplified and bug fixed since 1.2. If we look at 1.2 on the right here, if we want to add a collision, we had to go to view collision list and then we have to click add and this create new object window would pop up. Uh, this has been done away with. This was a pain in the ass and just got in the way of editing objects. Every object you needed to add, you would have to go through this window, and it's just a waste of time. So new to 1 or 
all you have to do is select the tile you want to put on the map and click the add button and a two byte object will be added in the top left corner or it will be added depending on where you are in your collision list so it'll be added on top of the current collision so as you can see we just added it to the end of the collision list you can change the length you can change which direction it's going and you can just change the ID just right here if you want to edit without deleting now new to 2.0 is collision repointing in 1.2 when we added a collision as you can see U space goes to 57 when we add a 2 byte collision if we save that you'll get a warning this warning tells you how it's going to corrupt the next room's data. This is not a permanent change and can be fixed. This is because you'll have to repoint the next room's data to a different address. And uh, we're not going to save. If we save and then we go to the next room, as you can see it's completely corrupted. This is because we've overridden the objects in the next room because the rooms are stored in a linear fashion. So room 82, we added an object and there wasn't enough space. So it overwrit, overwrote the data in 83. This is not a problem in Lail 2.0. Lail 2.0, if you go to the edit menu, features auto repoint collision slash entities. This can be turned off to prevent maps from being over flooded with collision data if you want to prevent yourself from overwriting the next room or stop yourself from adding too much data that can't be added. But if you have it checked, Every time we add a new thing, as you can see, the U space is increasing in the bottom left there, 99, 101 out of 99, 103 out of 99, because we keep adding two byte objects. But this isn't a problem, because if we go to the next room, it's still fine. And if we go to the next room, it's still fine. And this is because I've auto repointed collisions so that it takes away from the last map in the bank. So if we go, the map that has been taken from on the overworld would be 7F because that's the last map in the first overworld bank. 80 to FF are a secondary bank. So you can see 7F has now been overridden and 7E has been overridden a little bit, or maybe not, but 7F has no more free space. You can look at the data address and you'll see just where it is located in the ROM. So if you want to fix a map that needs free space because you don't have any space on it, if you go to edit, you can go to repoint collision slash entity address or press control shift R. This will open up a window, that simple window, it just has an address button. This is the address for the current map you're on. So you'll have to go into your ROM, find out wh where free space is and repoint accordingly. So if we move this, say, to 7B, let's see what it looks like like that. So that's not a map because I didn't, I didn't select an actual address. But let's say, let's go back to this one, 2664. So if we repoint this one to 26664, you can see the map is now loaded in. The values for the... Uh, interesting still some kinks in the program there will be more releases but as you can see now we have the same two maps as they're both located at the same data data address looks like the this is not reading correctly either for some reason so I'll have to look into that but it seems to work for the most part Maybe it's just because we repointed it to the same one. Uh, new to 2.0 is collision trimming. So if you need a quick way to free up space for the subsequent maps or following maps, so say I needed space on room one, because adding, you shouldn't, you should free use free space. You should make free space before adding objects. You don't want to ruin your maps, even if it's auto repointing you want them to you want to use you want to have free space so to make sure you have free space if you go to a map that has free space let's just make some free space on this one so as you can see we now have 98 out of 103 
use space at a free space. So if we go edit, trim collision entity address or control shift T, now it's 98 out of 98. And if we go to map one, we now have 78 out of 83. So we've made free space for map one by taking free space for map zero. And you can press control shift T again to take this down the chain. So you can keep pressing it to get the free space to the map you need. This only works in a left to right fashion, so you'll need to repoint if you're moving from right to left. But yeah, so that's a quick way to get free space. So if we turn off auto, auto repoint collisions, what happens then is when you add a collision to the map, it'll still add, but it doesn't save because there's no free space. So if we go back to the map after adding those collisions, you can see that they haven't been saved. So I added a bunch of collisions here. They're just tiles. I'm now using more space than I have free space, but nothing's been changed because I'm not auto repointing collisions. So let's just turn that back on. New to Lail 2.0, is the reworked editing entity feature. Well, it's not quite reworked per se. It's been changed in a few ways. So if we look at view edit entities, let's go into overlay mode because it's easier. Or if you want, if you want to get rid of borders on collision mode, you can go to view and get rid of collision borders. That'll make it easier to see any entities on the map. So new to layout 2.0 is entity drawing. Not every entity has a sprite yet. I'm still working on it, but as you can see, they're not all just black boxes anymore. So as you can see, we got a Moldorm here, a crow, we can go down here, we got the butterflies, we got Marin, the dog. So most sprites are programmed in. Droppable items aren't quite programmed in yet. So this is like a fairy in a tree, so that's still a black box, but we'll be working on that soon enough. Or if you go over here, these are three hearts underneath the bushes so it's still black boxes because I haven't gotten the data sorted out for that yet but most entities are drawing so you have cuckoos, butterflies, the NPCs some NPCs, some indoor ones are missing see this is a secret she seashell that's not quite in yet that's just because the sprites for entities uh, load different tile data than the sprites for droppable items so I haven't gotten that yet but it's a work in progress the sprite bank if we look at one point in the bottom right if we look at 1.2 this was a feature that was the sprite viewer slash bank editor now you would open this up and it would have the map and you would see your four lines of sprite data and you'd see which you could change the bank that it loaded the map loaded the sprite data from. You can now change the sprite bank simply by moving or changing the sprite bank value in the bottom right. It's quicker and easier to use this way. As you can see, sprites change depending on what bank we're in. So if we want the cuckoo to be a crow, we can change it to bank five and it'll and if we save our game and went into the game, we would see the changes. Uh, I haven't got a save file set up, so I'm not going to quite do that yet. So let's, I don't know what bank this was. Uh, um, let's take a look in layer 1.2. Bank A. So yeah, we're on bank A. Cool. Changed. Uh, so since the sprite viewer slash bank editor is removed from Lail 2.0. There's a new feature, the Sprite Sheet Editor in Lail 2.0. Now this is similar to the Sprite Viewer. This shows you the four lines of sprites, sprite tiles that are on the current map. And you can change the sprite bank in the top right and see which changes are there. And then you can change the sprite sheets for each one. Now this is an advanced feature. Um, the way entities are loaded uh, in game, the graphics really relies on the sprite sheets being properly set up. So you can't just set them up in any fashion, meaning you can't have, meaning there's a limitation on which sprites can be on which screen at the same time. 
this could be changed with some editing. Um, you can change which tiles the entities load the sprite sprite sheets from, or the tiles of the sprite sheets. But right now it's just sprite sheet editing, so it, it's more of an advanced feature. Messing with it isn't going to yield too good results right now. Uh, different, if we go to the color dungeon, the sprite sheet is different in that you have four banks and so each individual sprite sheet has a bank to it rather than one bank describing all four sprite sheets and the bank is different because it's a bank to the sprite graphics rather than so it's a it's it's actually the bank of the Game Boy ROM so the value is limited to I guess 3F times 4,000. All the same editors and tools are in Layout Point 2, 2.0 as they were in Layout 1.2. There have been some quality of life improvements to some of the editors. If we look going over them, we have the text editor, same as Layout 1.2. You have your text pointers where it's located in the ROM, you can repoint the text, and you can search for a phrase. So if we go like Moblin, it gives us a few addresses where Moblin is located in the ROM. Let's go to here. So you see that it's Moblins, and then you just have to go back a bit to find the start of the text. So uh, once we get to the start, the text pointer will change, so it's 21F. So if we go change 21F, you can see the full text. The sign editor, same as 1.2, simply change the pointer to the sign of the map you're on. You must be on the overworld to edit sign. Then you got the owl statue pointer. Each level has three owl statues as well as one owl statue for the color dungeon. You can change which map they're on and what text pointer they are pointing to in the editor. It's pretty simple. Warp editing. Um, well, for warp editing you need to be in collision mode. and You can't be in overlay. And you also need five bytes of free space per room. So if we try and add a warp to a room that doesn't have free space, create warp. Step. We had an error. You're trying to add more warp objects than can fit in the allotted space. Delete some objects first. So for this map, we need to make some room. This doesn't make sense. Oh, I'm on entities. That's why. I was going to say there's less free space than would make sense for the collisions, but it's because I was viewing entities. So you need to make some free space. So a simple way of making free space is just getting rid of collisions or trimming from the previous map using the trim collision slash entity address feature. Uh, looking at the warp editor, you have a type of warp, so it can be from the overworld, a dungeon, or a side scroller room. You have the region you're going to. This is the this is the dungeon essentially. So zero would be dungeon one. Uh, a is region A of the indoor maps. You can have which map and then your position that you're going to. Pretty simple. So if we were to follow this warp, we can. See, it's in region A, map EA. So, so to get to region A, dungeon editor only takes us through level 1 to 8 to color. So we go to indoor. We can select the region A. We can go to map EA. And there you go. It's a simple way of finding the map you are looking for. Just like 1.2, you have side view rooms. You need to click the side view loading button to view them. And you have raising tiles as well. Now, raising tiles is like level 7. These things here, and these are raising tiles. So they, they don't show properly unless you check the raising tiles feature. 
It's because the game changes the tile set depending on which tile is drawn on the, or which collision is on the map, I guess. I might have been able to look at to see if you placed one of these collisions and update it accordingly, but I haven't done that. It was just as simple as clicking the raisin tiles. Uh, this still needs to be looked into, to be honest. I think the key block uh, gets overridden when you go into raisin tiles but you can still see the key block in game so I'm not sure what's going on there so I gotta look into it some more okay what else chest editor simple as simple as going to the map you want to edit the chest and changing the item value start position editor same as 1.2 you can start on the overworld or you change which map and which position you start in which dungeon the minimap editor so this one's different depending on if you're on the overworld or the dungeon. First off, as you can see, this is the mini-map. You can select which map you're going to by clicking on the mini-map. Um, different, but the mini-map editor is now on the overworld. If we compare it to Lil 1.2, as you can see, we now have the tiles you can select from here. So it's easier to draw. You can see which tiles you want to select rather than having to memorize which tile number is which. Just change the palette and it re represents itself. If you want to edit dungeon minimaps, you can. They ha simply click the tile you want to add on the lower box. If you want a chest, you can click the chest and then you click the map. If you right click the map it will not place the tile it'll just take you to the map that you're clicking on so as you can see it changes the map value because we're going to different rooms if you right click the selected the selected tiles you will deselect the tile so you can start left clicking again if you if you so wish and you don't want to place tiles by accident let's go ahead and remove these but you can, let's say you want to remove those, you can do that, click accept. Now the minimap has been updated, simple as that. Again, changes don't save unless you click the save button. You have the dungeon portal editor, or the warp editor. It's different, it edits warps on the overworld and warps in the dungeon. So this is the mini boss warp for the dungeon, it tells you which rooms you're going to. Whereas on the overworld, you can change the warp map for the map you're on. So as you can see, this has a warp. So this is a warp map. This map takes you to 2C. You can change each map and select which map the warp would go to for that map. Palette editor. Simple as changing, figuring out which colors are which. Overworld has an index for palettes. You can change an index and then set an index for the map. Simple as that. Dungeon editing palettes. They just have a palette per dungeon as well as a palette per starting or entrance map. So if we go to map 17, we can see that the palette changes a bit. This is because map 17 is the entryway to the dungeon, so it has a different palette. That's all the editors, that's all the tools. Um, there's the patches. You can select any tool from here, but there's the patches as well. Uh, right now there's only remove intro music patch. If you click that, tells you which fights were written where, tells you what's happened, and the patch is simple as that. If you want to remove the patch, you can restore intro music simply by clicking restore intro music. Let's see if there's anything I'm missing. We can turn collision borders back on. You can copy the palette and paste the palette. Control Alt C, Control Alt V. So we Control Alt C, Dungeon 1, and then we go to Dungeon 2, and Control Alt V. Changes the palette. And then there's just the helps and credit page. 
So this just takes you to the GitHub. Simple as that. So that's Lail 2.0. That's the core features. Repointing is a, the biggest. So collision editing is streamlined now. Should be easier to manage your maps and function and make them function properly. Um, I think that's about everything. So thanks for watching. If you're interested in giving Lail 2.0 a try, there should be a link in the description, or just compile it yourself on GitHub or download the release on GitHub. It's all good. And yeah, thanks for watching. I've been Van Isle, and we'll see you another time for another update video, maybe. Goodbye.